And uh, thank you very much for joining us once again on PM Express. Listen, I have never spoken about this subject before, so bear with me. And I'm not surprised if many of you are wondering, athletics on PM Express? Of course, why not? We've talked about football um, on the show many, many times. But so, yeah, but let's have a conversation about it. You possibly understand very soon as we go on why this is key. Because we are known the world over for our football. But in the last month or so, Ghana has been getting some very, very good, you know, um, attention when it comes to athletics also. And in the midst of, I, I always say this, I always want to find that good news story in the midst of this current economic crisis. Everybody wants something that they can smile about. And when there was little bad news when it comes to, well, the big one, athletics over the weekend, then you began to appreciate why many, many Ghanaians were keenly following the athletics and how our, our men and women, our boys and girls were performing uh, at the, uh, the Commonwealth you know, Games and also the World Athletic Championship. And then I, I was like, wow, so we were following. It took the bad news, a, a massive error for us to show that we care. And people were very, very upset with our disqualification in that, in that really. We'll come to that towards the end. But so why are we talking about this today? And there's a good, there's a bad, there's an ugly. And why are we talking about this uh, today on the show? We are having this conversation because if you look at the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games, and I know many of you possibly have been caught up with the, you know, EPL coming and so you're forgetting that in England, in the UK, in Birmingham to be very specific, a major a major event was happening when it comes to athletics. Ghana's performance, this, this is what it is. We have a total, we have gold of zero, yes, silver of two, bronze of three, a total of five medals. And I'll put it in a historical contest shortly, just so you appreciate why this is important. If you look at the medals table from, from you know, the continent, you have Ghana in that sixth place, one, two, three, four, five, sixth place, with five uh, medals in total. Nigeria by far dominating the continent with 25. South Africa obviously is 27, Kenya is 21. And so you begin to see that these three countries on the continent, in terms of the shared numbers, are streets ahead of many. For Kenya, everybody knows when it comes to the long distance running and the track and field, they, they seem to do pretty well. Nigeria too is showing some great, but, but yeah, I mean, Ghana is here with Mauritius and Uganda. Yeah, I mean, it's five, but you're in sixth place when it comes to the countries that con contested in the, from Africa in there. And then we have a few of the bright spots that we need to focus on today. One of them is um, uh, uh, the uh, very interesting personality of Joseph Paul Amwa. Um, he won a bronze in the 2000, in the 200 meter race. Paul becomes the first African to win a medal in the 200 meter event since 2006. He's now the first Ghanaian to win a medal in 200 meters after George Daniels in 1974. So that is how far back we have to go uh, for this to happen. Yeah, he won bronze, but it's a big deal. But here's where we always shine. And many of the uh, big hitters from Ghana who eventually become something big on the global stage, often you begin to see their, lines, uh, their, their lights begin to shine in these tournaments, boxing, Joseph Komi, Ibrahim Mensah, Abdul Omar, they were really great to behold in the Birmingham 2020 Commonwealth Games and we celebrate them for what they've achieved. But there's a big picture about our athletics generally because we seem to be doing something interesting. You may have heard the name Azamati, right? You really taking social media by storm. We'll talk about him pretty shortly. And there's Deborah Aqua. One bronze, first Ghanaian woman to win Commonwealth Games long jump medal. Finished third with a leap of uh, 6.94 meters in the final. Uh, Nigeria, we know, placed first with a leap of um, 6.99 meters. Australia placed uh, second uh, with a leap of um, uh, 6.94. So, yeah, we are, in, we are in the good leagues. Now, this is what makes it interesting. If you look at our performance this time round, uh, if you compare it to the previous year, so this is our best performance in the Commonwealth Games since 2006. So this is a big deal for us. And I wonder, what is it? Yeah, you may say, well, I mean, closest is 2010, just one medal more, but that's big. If a country like Ghana, where our focus is so much on football, 
and you know, our athletes do this, well, you need to pay attention to it. Can we do more of this uh, and, and put the Ghana's name out there? Now, everybody's talking about Ghana as a country that could default in paying its debt, a country that could go the way of Sri Lanka. So there's a lot of bad news, right? So when you find something as good as this, you need to talk about it. And Ghana gold medals, you know, in, in, uh, in Melbourne as well is what we're showing here. And then there's a list of Ghanaian medals in each Olympic Games. Now, we're just looking at this broadly now, right? In gold, we've not won anything, but silver, we've won one, and bronze is uh, four. Total is five as well. So when we go to Olympics too, yeah, I mean, we don't do, um, we don't do well, but Olympics is the big leagues. But the thing that you begin to see, obviously, is that if you come to the Commonwealth Games, we, we tend to do okay, you know, compared to the others, not, not, as, not as well. But when you put us in the big leagues of the Olympics, um, where, of course, you have the Usain Bowles when they were in your prime performing, then, of course, we're going to, you're going to see a, a tiny little country with a very little budget on sports generally, um, with a football bias, obviously expected to struggle, right? Um, and, and, and this, is the, this of course, is a, is a, and boxing has been one of our biggest uh, attractions and when it comes to performances. But this is the story that got many people talking, right? This is the story. The story of our brilliant young men who were tear um, in the semifinals in, in the four by 100 meters race, only to miss out because of no fault of theirs. They were disqualified Right, I mean, per the World Athletics rule TRL 24-11, I don't know what that is. My guest will tell me what that is pretty shortly. Um, in short, only athletes whose names are on the final confirmation form are starters and can run through the competition. Um, they'll break it down, so don't worry about it. Now, they, they, there was a mistake, there was an error by the Ghana Athletics Association that led to that disqualification, and they were in good position looking at what they performed, how they performed in the semifinals, to do something great in the final. And these were young people who had done great individually and they were collectively going to do something great. And unfortunately, this mistake by the Ghana Athletics Association led to their disqualification. That broke a lot of hearts if you followed social media over the weekend. There was an apology by the Ghana Athletics Association because they made that mistake. Uh, we ran down unqualified and heartfelt apology to the men's uh, 400, uh, for a four by 100 meters for the technical oversight. That's what they called it, technical oversight that led to the disqualification of the team from the final. The withdrawal was, no, was not transmitted in time to the technical information center by our coaching crew. So it was just a matter of informing the authorities of a change in personnel on the track, which they somebody failed, somebody slept on their jobs. And because of that, you know, these four gentlemen didn't get their, their, their chance to show the world what they could do in the finals. That is the thing that got many people talking, and that negativity has brought some focus, and we want to talk about it tonight, what it could have been for these four gentlemen. My guests are joining me, uh, seated Gary Al Smith, George Addo Jr., and of course, my personal, uh, you know, as I was telling Gary, you need to pond him, uh, pro proper introduction, to PM Express and of course to the to the multimedia family. Um, that's him there. That's in the smiley. You're wondering who that is. You may have seen him on social media. He's writing extensively about this. And when I saw him outdoored uh, on social media, I said, oh, this is perfect because I want to talk about this and I want him on the show as well so we can properly outdoor him to the rest of the world. Our latest signing. Remember we are going to the, I mean, the transfer window is still open um, to the end of, the, of August. And uh, we've made a signing. I will introduce him properly. Don't worry. I'm wondering why I haven't mentioned his name yet. Don't worry. When I said that, I will do so. I mean, back in the day when Manchester United signed somebody, we brought a piano, you know, and then he, the guy played the piano and eventually he became a pianist and he forgot to play his football. Uh, so we are, we are being careful with this. But this one is going to be a hit, not a miss. I'll introduce him when I return. Ask Gary and, and George, you know them already, um, and we'll hear his thoughts on this. Trust me, stay with me. They'll make this exciting. If you think athletics is boring, wait till you hear these three gentlemen on the show tonight. And thank you everyone for staying with us. Yes, um, I've introduced Gary and George already, you know them. But our new signing joining us uh, for the very first time in this Premier League match. Uh, we'll see how he performs. Uh, don't mind me. Fentu Tahiru Fentu, thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure. It was with the, it's a pleasure. 
He's with the Joy Sports team now. Um, I know you know him, and I'm delighted that he's joining our, our team uh, now. What was the transfer fee? <laughs> Forgive me. Um, by the way, but, but let, let's, let's talk about athletics. I said, my team and I, of course, we didn't, we didn't want to be influenced by you guys because you know about it too much. And sometimes when you know about it too much, you might give me a very technical answer. So I just said a resurgence. Yeah. Is it fair to say we're having a resurgence in, that, in, that, in Ghana, Ghanaian athletics? Um, Performance-wise, I mean, if you contextualize it well, I think it's fair to say that perhaps we have renewed interest um, but also a, a, a resurgence to a certain extent, mostly because I think at the moment mm -hmm. we are living in a time that is unprecedented in Ghana's athletics history, even if the medals may not necessarily reflect that. What makes it unprecedented? Um, this is the first time in the history of Ghana's athletics since electronic timing started. Of course, when electronic, started, this would, uh, when electronic timing started, anybody that ran any time was a national record. <laughs> but now, of course, we're living in a time where we have as many as five national record holders actively running mm -hmm. at the same time. The 100 meter record holder is Azam Azamati at the moment. Mm -hmm. The 200 meter record holder is Joseph Paul Amor. Now, the two of them, together with a few others, hold the national record in the 4 by 100 meter relay. The national record in the women's long jump is held by Deborah Aqua, who, uh, who, was, uh, who won bronze uh, yeah. yesterday. And uh, at the moment, she's quite flying, 6.94. And then the women's high jump record holder is also Abigail Quartzing at uh, 1.92. So that is incredible. And just last year, the national record holder in the women's triple jump was at the Tokyo Olympics, Nadia Eke. Of course, she's called a quit. So you're looking at a generation of Ghanaian athletes that have set records and are at levels that we've never seen before, all at the same time. And something you said, that I, I, and Gary, he mentioned national records. Mm -hmm. But the evidence on the ground is these national records, these individuals who are, you know, chalking the records, are also doing it on the national, on the international stage. That is what competing very, very well too. So it's not just national; we are taking it international. Is correct? Yes, that's why fans would say that it's probably a yes and no answer. Resurgence is a very strong word. Yeah. However, it may be true because look the kind of attention that these lads, and remember, if you look at their ages, they are between 21. All of them are below 26. Yeah, 20, except Sean Safo Injury. Yeah. In, in the picture you showed, he was on the far okay. He's 31. Okay. Okay, and that's why he was particularly gutted that they couldn't run in that final. So this would be, this possibly was his last his chance. Twilight is yeah. swan song. Okay. So in the last four years, and I'm sure the fact is we can talk about it, you know, since the Halcyon days where, I'm sure you know, when Graphic Sports was the only newspaper and you woke up to see Ignatius Geyser had won this or Leo Masmios had done this and Aziz Zakari, we went a blank period of 15, 20 years yeah. or something like that where nothing was forthcoming. But this, for me, this appeared to come from nowhere. From nowhere. Little Benjamin Zamati is doing wonders in the 100 meters and it plays what? Dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fourth. Yeah. Fourth. I'm and he won like... first in, uh, he, he came first in the Diamond League in Paris and all that. So just to answer you directly, resurgence, um, one, one of our famous top senior journalist colleague friends just texted him uh, when he put up the flyer about the show and asked, is it really a resurgence? You know, because it's quite a strong word. But if you put it in a certain context, for a certain generation of those who don't know anything about Ghanaian athletics in the last 10 years, they've not seen anything like this before. I must confess, when I was using the I used the word resurgence. Yeah. I went back to Cambridge Dictionary to check. And? And it sort of says, when it's about when you're describing something you've forgotten about and there's, there's a resurfacing where the setting enthusiasm of, of, that, of that thing. And I'm like, yeah, of course. I mean, I totally have forgotten that athletics. Charlie, it's been a while. That, yeah. you know, that, and then you have so, so if you take that, the fact that be. athletics or things that have brought us joy, sport-wise, athletics has not done that for a while. Yeah. So in that sense, it is a reason. Consider we, it, it just trended over the weekend. And if, I before. Mean, yeah. yeah, and before. I mean, as Amatis thing, and I saw people sh sharing the clips, the short clip of the 
100 meter dash, yeah. right? That clearly then was like, okay. In my subconscious, even before this show, I kept on thinking that there's something happening in the world of athletics. And I want to bring in George, because George was at the World Athletics Championship. He covered this With very him. live. You, you were also there. Yeah. Was there. Oh, I see. And that is where they started. And George, what was it about the World Athletic Championships that, for the very first time, started, um, and I read the apology, we'll come to that pretty shortly, from the, uh, the Ghana Athletics Association. And when they did the rankings after they, we placed fifth. Uh, fifth, yeah. right? In the world, was it? No, in the... In, in, in the... <laughs> all, all by 100 meters relay. <laughs> George? No. Yeah, that was, that was the four by 100 meters relay team, if you say. They were fifth and number five in the world, yes? Number five in the world, that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. In terms yeah. of ranking. Ranking, yeah. That is ranking, time ranking. Yeah. Yes. The way, yeah. the way the relays work, and even the way times and distances work, the World Athletics has a ranking system. And we're fifth on, yeah, based in on the times, world. And some of it based on accumulated performances. Yeah. But, 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 but George, that yeah, but his own is that we're fifth. That's in the world. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but okay. yes, I mean, world, George, yeah. George, how big a deal? When I saw it today, I'm like, wow, seriously. The whole world, US was there and everybody else, right? And this was in the US. Yeah. And, yeah, and, US and, was there, Jamaica was there, you know, Canada was there, and uh, we managed to finish fourth. I mean, I mean, we managed to finish fifth. I mean, if you, if you look at it, I, I would say that there has been a gradual progress. Like, it's been so progressive, what these boys have been doing. And I'm sure later on in the show, we'll go into the detail of, of how they were, they were noticed and, and, and the process they went through, going through university education in the United States because they got access to coaches and access to wonderful facilities. But of course, the share grits by these athletes. So it's been rising gradually, um, largely because great media men like Fentio, like myself, like Gary, like Joy FM, like Multimedia, took fantastic interest in pushing the sport and putting it out there. On our platform, we have had maybe two or three exclusive you know, athletic shows where we are talking about what these boys are doing and how they've gone. So generally, I'd say that, one, the performances of these athletes has continued to inspire confidence. You take someone like Benjamin Azamati at the University of Ghana, uh, Ghana University Sports Association, 100 meters champion, running a time of 10.61 and 10.31, just moves to West Texas A&M, you know, university, and all of a sudden he starts running, you know, 9.97 breaks the record. You see that 9.90 seconds, and people are getting excited, and the media are really getting into it. So I, I, I would say, I would say the media has played their part, but more importantly, um, the athletes have shown us. When Fenty was going through the list, he even forgot about the 800 meters national record holder, oh, Alex Amankwa. He's run right. 1.44, you know, and 1.4490, 1.4468. That is every indication that, well, these are special group, a very special group of athletes. But again, we have to give thumbs up to the media men who have sacrificed a lot of the time and media houses who have ensured that this is up there. For those who are following, they are just told us a good story of, look, we have just not given them what they wanted. Now we're giving them, and they're enjoying it so much. Okay, so, so let's come back to that. So how on earth is a tiny little country that has its only f sports focus being football? If I, now, f sports and football is interchangeable. When I say sports in Ghana, it's football, I mean, yeah. actually. I mean, I, 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 many times when I was standing there, I was trying to, I kept on repeating, trying to correct myself, because when I say sports, I only think football. Uh -huh. How on earth is a country like Ghana and the World Athletic Championship, it managed to place fifth. What's happening? Is it a deliberate, is it media? Mm -hmm. Or is it, there's been a deliberate um, investment in the boys, the girls, a, a, a properly crafted policy that has gotten us to this point? What is it? Uh, a, a few factors, to be honest. One of them, and, and let's start from there, is the sheer grit and determination from the boys. Yeah. Now, and girls. I'll tell you what. All of his enthusiasm and interest in the men's relay team in particular started when they won gold at the 2019 Africa Games in Rabat, okay. in Morocco. They came from nowhere. Jopo was in third year of university. Azamati was a local athlete at the time. He was at the University yeah. of Ghana. Yeah. Martin Enchi was with Joe Paul in Copin State. He was in third year as well. And then you had Sean, the only experienced athlete 
in that quartet that had ever competed at any international games. At that African Games, Jopo didn't even make it to the final of the 200 meters, his favorite event. Azamati didn't make it to the final of the 100 meters. Uh, Sean didn't make it to the final of the 100 meters. But when they took to the track, for that relay team, for that relay race, one of the most remarkable things anybody's ever seen happened right before our eyes. When Joseph Paul Amo took the baton, he was behind the Nigerian. The Nigerian, mm -hmm. Ezekiri, had won the individual gold medal. But he went past him like he wasn't there and anchored Ghana to a gold medal at the African Games. From then on, we, everybody else started to get interested. But you see, Azamati may have been the only local athlete. The rest of them, apart from Sean, those two that were at the University of Copping State University or whatever it's called, those were not there by accident. Yeah. And this is where we talk about a properly crafted policy from the GAA coming to fruition. Because when, for one thing, that the Prof. Dodo administration can be criticized for all of the things they can be criticized for. The one thing that you have to give them credit for was their carefully planned policy of ensuring that all of the talented athletes in Ghana got student scholarship to the US. Yeah. Because was it, there- yep. Was it the GAA that facilitated that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was and this, this has been their policy. Okay. They made sure that every single athlete that had any potential secured scholarship. And they were at the forefront of securing those scholarships for these students. That's interesting. Yeah. So because they knew that, look at, take this country for example. As we speak, the only, in fact, we do not have a properly certified athletics track in this country. The only certified athletics track we have now is the one at the Cape Coast Stadium. Babaya Stadium was just renovated. The track is not certified, which means that if you run any record in that track, it wouldn't be accepted. When the Akras Sports Stadium was renovated for Cannes 2008, the athletic track was removed. Then you have Elwak, which is a, at a sorry state. It's an excuse of, a, of an athletic track. So when you have all of these talented athletes, if you keep them in this country, it is impossible to train them to elite levels. Cote d'Ivoire training athletes to elite level in their country. Yep. Marie Jose Talu trains in Cote d'Ivoire. Athasisis trains in Cote d'Ivoire. We can't have our athletes training here. So the GAA learned fast and decided that the best thing to do was to send them abroad. And it is that program that gave us the likes of Jeanette and Ponsa. Yep. Jeanette won two medals for us at the African two Championship. Two in one. And 200 meters and 100 meters. Okay. She just retired. We, it's that system that gave us the likes of Flinks, the likes of uh, uh, so, Gemma Champon, the likes of all of them. And those girls as well qualified for an Olympic Games, had World Championships in succession, and then they also were instrumental in breaking the national record. So you have all of these boys sent abroad, getting the best of facilities, training in the best of, under the best of coaches at universities in the US. The problem with that, however, mm -hmm. is that with that, you're unable to control what happens to them after school. And that has always been why a lot of the time we have the challenges that we do. So that relay team that won the 2019 gold medal in the African Games, mm -hmm. they next competed in a qualifying event for the Tokyo Olympics. Now, to compete at the Tokyo Olympics, the team needed to qualify. To qualify, they needed to go to a competition called in, in Silesia. Poland. And, and that competition was in Poland. Since winning the competition in 2019 in Rabat, the next time they saw each other <laughs> was three days to the competition in Poland. I see. Never trained together. So, and that's where I feel like government or anybody else that could have stepped in failed, failed them. Because that gap was a period where they could have been put together in a relay camp and they could have done much better. But of course, they defied all the odds. They qualified for... Uh, the, uh, for the Tokyo Olympic Games, that qualification also booked them a slot at the World Championships. So that's where you talk about the greats. And, and, exactly. And, 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 and Gary, mm. so, so he makes the point about, well, so the, the policy there is Ghana Athletics Association. If you are good enough, you go abroad. Okay. Yes. But then let me fill in a few things. Yeah. Um, 
a few private groups have also done their bit. Yeah. So there's a popular group called Just Because Fitness. Just Because Fitness. Mm -hmm. And who are they? They are just a group of people who like what they see on TV, of these boys and girls. And they've decided that, Evans, Charlie, see these people. Let's find some money and give them. They also produced at least Ho Haluti. They did. Who ran in the women's 4x100 meter final for us. You know, they qualified. So they produced her because they found her in the Upper West region. She, they brought her to school in... So Amas brought Amas her. Amas brought her. Amas scouted her, brought her to school. Then to they school. came in and supported Then they saw her at Amas, this in Kumasi. And then they said, no, this is a regional champion. She was barely a teenager. They got her abroad. Okay. Now, the other side of this, which he was trying to paint, is that, for example, Benjamin Azamati is probably the poster boy of Ghana athletics right now. Yeah. Guess what? There is a guy called Gadai. What's his first name again? Edwin. Edwin Gadai, who used to beat Benjamin Azamati sometimes. You know where he is? Where? He's in Cape Coast. Doing what? He's not got the opportunity to go. Why? He's not got the I mean, it's life, right? Okay. So it's possible that Benjamin will go, go. Benjamin has been in what? Africa Games, yep. World Athletics Championship, Diamond League. Well, Benjamin has signed a pro sponsorship deal worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially. The guy who used to beat him sometimes. So according to some people, Edwin Gadai is even better than Azamati, but he's in Ghana. He didn't get a scholarship. Yes. So the point he's making is that if we had facilities here, it wouldn't have mattered whether Azamati has gone abroad. I mean, you are a world-class broadcaster. You are in Joy FM, yeah. right? Your colleague may go to BBC or CNN, but you still are a world-class broadcaster because yeah. basically the same kind of equipment you have here yeah. is what they have there. Yeah. The only difference may be the country that you are in. So that's the thing. It is not that because we have seemingly found a silver bullet that is a policy, it is the best thing. It is far from the ideal thing, which is why the next step for us is we are seeing all these people do the right thing. But for every Azamati, there are hundreds of them there, as illustrated by an example two weeks ago. I was asking George only, to, only this afternoon when we were preparing for the show that the next Benjamin Azamati, that his heir to the throne at the University of Ghana, right, was scouted at the recent uh, GUSA Games, which is the Ghana University Sports Association. He ran, he ran crazy times, and guess what? And this is just a few months ago. Yeah. Because he's at the University of Ghana and there's that policy and there's that proactiveness, he's going to the USA. Yeah. And he just ran just a few months ago. Meanwhile, to it, replace Azamati, to replace in Azamati in the same school. Yes. Yeah. So the George yeah. can take yeah, up yeah, the story. Yeah. George. Yeah. So so clearly, so so you see, there are times when the GA scholarship is going to save you. There are times when yeah, just because can come in and save you. There are times when um, your university through some connections can help you to go. So there are some of the athletes like Azamati who managed to work their way through some great management. And as we're talking. You know, Bosio has replaced Azamati at uh, West, Texas, West Texas A&M, and it's going on. So you obviously need the opportunity. You need that opportunity to get out of Ghana to polish your craft. But, you know, Fent and Gary have made important points. But even for those out there, Evans, there's still a very serious point in their, in their careers where it all goes down. Because whilst you are in school with your university, you, you are on scholarship. You, you're able to see the coaches. You're able to use the facilities. But when school is over, mm. now having to transition from being, a, you know, a semi-pro athlete to a pro athlete has become a, a very big problem for most of them. Fent had an interview with Deborah Aqua who said, look, if she doesn't get the help that she needs after school, she's going to drop it all. This is Deborah Aqua. We only saw at the Commonwealth Games 6.94 yeah. meters. For God's sake, she's heading towards 7.0 which would be like getting medals anywhere because, on any because global Because what will stage. happen is that she, she'll have school, to come back to Ghana. Or something. I mean, yes. George, because or, she's or done with school. Okay. Yes, she's done with school. And then there's no scholarship. And if you don't have, uh, if you're not lucky to get a sponsorship, you're not lucky to get a deal like Azamati has at the moment that could see him go beyond just school, then you are in trouble. So look at the, look at the main issues we have online. There's a problem with getting out if you don't have the opportunity. 
when you even have the opportunity, what happens after school? What happens after school is another big one. If you don't get the professional help, if you don't get the sponsorship deal, you are still left out. So many gaps. Just to point to you that we haven't been very deliberate about what's happening. It's about sheer grit and I mean, great opportunities. Th th there's a real risk that this, we, this might be a missed opportunity. Yeah. We, have this already, crop, we, this have, crop. we have already missed a few. Yeah. And you see, and, and I'll come to that briefly. You see, the, thing, the point George is making about what happens after school isn't just about what happens after graduation. Mm -hmm. It's also what happens after vacation. So listen to me. Every single major international competition when it comes to athletics is often held in the summer, usually in July and in August. Yeah. Our students, who are our athletes, often compete in the university, the NCAA championships. By the first week of June, the NCAA championships are done. When that competition is over, that is a competition of all universities in the US. When that competition is done, it's vacation. Every athlete goes home. Now imagine that you have top athletes, and your top athletes are students. By the first week of June, the <laughs> NCAAs are over. The competition is in the middle of July. Between when the, the NCAAs is over and July, they're home. You know why? Because when school vacates, they no longer have access to the coaches. Yeah. They no longer have access even to the trucks. If you don't have goodwill with some of the sports mm. uh, you know, masters in the school, you may not even have access to the trucks. So basically, you would be home for six weeks straight, nonstop. Now, Ghana doesn't contribute in campaign you, and that is why we have failed these athletes. Otherwise, this fifth place that you're so excited about at the relays, uh, at the World Championship, could easily have become a third place or a second place yeah. Yeah. if they had relay camps. Yeah. Because this competition we are talking about, the reason they probably didn't do as well as some of us expected and thought they were capable of was because they were never put together for any relay camp ahead of that competition. They had not seen each other since the Tokyo Olympics. And Olympic, 12 months had passed since the relay team got together to exchange batons. <laughs> the next time they saw each other after the Olympic Games was in Oregon. And they put up a national record run, finished fit in the entire world. Imagine what would have happened if in that 12 month period, yeah. we put in any slight investment in trying to get them to master the art of ch exchanging batons and focus on getting faster. Then you're looking at, you asked the question about what we I mean, risk we're, losing we're, yeah. in terms of this crop. Because this crop done with school, yes. where do because they go listen, if they have to come Joe back? Joe has graduated. Joe has graduated though. Yeah. As a Matisse <laughs> NCAA competition uh, is exhausted, so he's no longer eligible to compete in the NCAAs. In other words, his scholarship is done. Oh, the, the, I'm going to the, even the men, Sean is 31, like you said. He mm. can't get any faster. Yeah. This is the truth. It hurts, but it's the truth. He's not getting any faster. We've got the young kid that's gone to uh, 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 as a school now. He's never run with this crop before. So we're already looking at a new crop coming. In fact, one of the members of the relay team that won that gold in the 2019 African Games, Martin Enchi, he's already out of the picture. So you're looking at that, it's already happening. <laughs> yeah. Because now we had two athletes. In fact, the last three relay competitions. In Silesia, we had Odro Menu. At the Olympics, we had Emmanuel Yaboa. Both of them were at Oregon for the World Championship. When we went to Birmingham, the two of them didn't make it. Now, for those of us that are privy to why they didn't make it, it is a very, it is, it is a, a remarkably sad story. And a very which simple, what? sad story. Which, which is what? Which is, which is, let's just put it in, in, in simple terms that if we were doing our homework that we were saying, you know, somebody could have given them a hand so that they could have gotten from the U US to the UK on time with their documentation and everything. It's as simple as that, Evans. It's really as simple as that. Uh, Evans, would you believe if I told you that Ghana has missed out at top athletes representing the country at major competitions because the student athletes that we have in the US, the visas had expired and they couldn't travel outside the country. Wow. Do, do you get if it? If I told so you you're, that. On a, you're on a student visa. I mean, you went to the UK. Yeah, yeah. So your student visa expired. Yeah. So there's a competition. But you, can't you, you can't go because if you go, you can't come. And all it, it will take some ambassador you know, facilitating the you process. Exactly. That's and that has happened in the past. Yeah. 
in the recent past, very mm -hmm. recent past. So these are the challenges we're dealing with. And right now, the current crop that you speak of, we are in a very similar situation. Yeah. Because now with Joe done with school, Azez scholarship expiring, Shonsef uh, Wenchi being 31, fortunately for them, the next world championships is in Budapest just next year. So that might be their last swan song. So, but so, then while they are trying, yeah. then you have the <laughs> officials also messing them up. So Gary, I hear the story earlier about even Ivory Coast yeah. having um, world the standard tracks. That, yes. you know, this is Ivory Coast. Mm. I mean, why is that Ghana hasn't invested in this? Is it that um, we simply don't see the importance of track and field? Um, you host PM Express every day. Yeah. I watch as much as I can. Yeah. It's, it's perhaps the same thing you see in other sectors every day. Every day. Okay. So, so it's, is this a case of we, we just haven't prioritized it? Yeah. And I'll tell you what. I mean, as much as we all love to bash government and stuff, remarkably, yeah. as bad as the situation is, and we're saying it the other time, George, I think, this current minist ministry probably should get some credit for even, even paying attention. Because previously, friends, correct me if I'm wrong, Previously, you won't even get people even paying attention to it. Yeah. So to be oh, yeah. fair to them, they have put some money into getting them there. Yeah. At first, simple things like even getting tickets for the athletes yeah. was even a problem. I remember they used to all literally beg the public to support exactly. it or try and donate exactly. to the... And I'm sure you're going for a commercial break. No, no, no. No. So we can talk about some of the simple solutions that we can copy yeah, from, mean, from our, from I, I'll our I'll come, I'll come yeah. to the solutions, um, but yeah. I don't want to bring in George. I yeah. want to talk, George, I want to talk to you about boxing, though. Um, and because in, in the challenges that we've had, boxing historically has been where we do our best job in, in these competitions. Am I wrong to say that over the last few years, we appear to be waning? Our influence in that domain appears to be waning when it comes to the boxing arena to where we used to do very well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're right, because boxing has always given us the medals that we want, but I always believe that it could be better. Once you've talked about boxing, let me just give you a quick, 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 quick one. And I'm sure friends and Gary have noticed that India picked about seven medals, and it's because of a, a governmental <laughs> decision. Did you say India? <laughs> of course. India, I said India, yes. I, I, I mean, a Ghanaian lost to India. A Ghanaian lost to India, to an Indian. Look, the they, Ghanaian they lost to an started... Indian. You yes, mean a Ghanaian yes, from yes. Bukom? Or... <laughs> yes. A Ghanaian from Bukom? I am only saying this. Yes. yes lost to an I'm Indian. Guys. Yes, Evans, I'm saying this so that you understand that if we put in a little more, we'll wow. get more from our boxers. Our boxers should be winning gold with all that we have. India had a, had a plan in place from 2016. They wanted to increase their medals. Here we are. I mean, seven years after, they are winning, they are winning a lot of medals. In the female boxing, it was crazy. They were winning medals that, it, I mean, the likes of BBC and co had to do a whole special on them. But this is the work of a seven-year project that you are seeing, you know, coming to fruition there. There's so many countries who pay attention to it. We have got the raw talent here. What we need to do is help them. The good thing about the boxers, though, is that they're amateur boxers mostly, so they come with their coaches, and so they're able to hopefully learn a lot and work together. That is probably uh, the little difference in that. But it's the sheer grit and the raw talent that they've got. These boxers have to go through a lot. But they go to the world stage and tell themselves that we must make it work once we're here and do everything to make sure that they get us the medals. So boxing has been great, but we can do even better. And, and, and once we don't have that deliberate approach, once we don't have a clear plan coming from government or coming from a corporate body, sometimes it's not all about government. Because I remember... Um, Blessing of Kakbari and the likes of the Bible to do. When they were done with school, they had companies that came out and said, I take this um, athlete and I want to give him $40,000 a year because I believe that this athlete has what it takes to go to the next level. So nothing is stopping any of the companies who are watching us today to say, I take on Joseph Paul. I want to help Joseph Paul to go all the way. I want to sponsor him and give him $50,000 a year. And I'm sure after three years, he win medals. All the companies that try this elsewhere in the world uh, survived. So boxing is great. We like what happens here. But again, it's down to those words that Fentio used at the start of the show. It's down to sheer grit. The boys are so hungry. Even when they are not well, they are, they are, they are, they are declared medically unfit. They want to go and box because they know that is the opportunity. 
And guess what happens? Once they win a medal at the Commonwealth Games, they are tempted to go professional when they are not ready, yeah. and then everything goes down. Yeah, yeah. Evans, let me let me George Fence. Let's 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 surprise Evans. India, I mean, at least in boxing, you can say that for a country of 1.4 billion, that's their population. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should find one or two decent boxes. Yeah. Now, let me surprise you. <laughs> let's tell him what country the athlete who beat Azamati is from. Yeah, you know, Azamati came fourth in the hundred meter final. Yeah. And he didn't win a medal. He didn't win guess, a medal. Guess what? Guess the, guess. Last, uh, the last yeah. athlete to win the medal in third place was from Sri Lanka. <laughs> so Sri Lankans yeah. are beating us to 100 meters. Wow. Evans, I mean, think about so, it. Nobody has a right to anything. You understand? Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter how much you think you have you the talent, talent in yeah. Bukum. If, if you don't you wanna, prepare... If you don't invest in it, yeah. that talent know, and prepare. Yeah. And, you see, and when we talk about investment, one major aspect of... The, 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 the problem in this country that we haven't focused a lot on, and this cuts across, even from football, is coaching. Yeah. And the same thing is wrong with the coaching in athletics, the coaching in boxing. But that's the one that beats me, because we used to have a glut of good coaches yeah. in Buko. Even proper officials we don't have. The Commonwealth Games were so ongoing, there was not a single Ghanaian listed as an official. In boxing. In boxing, okay. Yeah, yeah. But here we are. Aren't we supposed to be the greatest boxing nation should, in Africa? Yeah, yeah, so they should be coming from And then interestingly, for the entire Commonwealth Games, to take it out of boxing, yeah. for the entire Commonwealth Games, one official came from Ghana. One. No, think about it. Okay. In all sports. In all sports. And this in which field? Which and this no, is no, in all games. sports. In all like sports, we, we had only one official there. So the football equivalent, because you know that's what you yeah. can relate, is that you know the uproar when there's an Afcon, and yeah. we say we are a traditional football country. Yeah, we don't and have a referee. We don't have a referee there. We don't have Thanks. assistant referee. No, no. Yeah, no. And think about it. This is not a football. This is not one competition. Mm -hmm. This is a multi-sport event. Yeah. And they are. Whatever we took for one, how many? Over, yeah, over 120 athletes. We probably. took over 120 athletes, mm -hmm. and we didn't have even two officials there. And like Fenta not said, not table tennis, not weightlifting, not athletics, not boxing, no, no, not nothing. nothing. I I want to come to that story that got the bad news that got a lot of people talking over the weekend, and, and the story began to trend. the The story of how the relay team that was third in the semi-finals, were disqualified in the semi-finals, uh, in, in the finals. The final. um, George, what really happened? We've heard the apology that we simply didn't hand in the replacement in time, I think it was. Yeah. What happened there? Well, George or me? You, George, Gary. Gary. <laughs> so, uh, like you said, when you were giving the introduction yeah. and you, you were reading, it just I had a light bulb moment because, you know, I, look, I know PM Express has a certain audience. And the best example I can give you, you remember the 2012 election petition hearing? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. You remember the thing about the pink sheets? Yeah. And the contention around transmission of the results? Yeah. If you didn't hand the thing to the guy and it wasn't signed, it was inadmissible. Okay. You remember that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, what's up? That's, that's basically yeah. it. So... You have put in a list of athletes that they are going to run in the final, right? You have decided that Evan Spencer, Fento Tahiru, George Ado Jr. are going to run in the race for you, and Gary Al Smith are going to run as the 4x100. Mm -hmm. So that's the list that the officials have. A few hours or whatever to the time, for some reason, tactical or whatever, you decide that you are dropping Gary Al Smith and you are putting Kofi Mensa there, the rule is quite simple. That one hour to the time, at least, at least team so you can do it the day before. Yes, you can do one whole day before, whatever. Just tell the officials. That's all. That's all. Yeah. There's a system where you log in, yeah. and then you fill in the details of those that are running in that order. So if See you it this way. Yeah. It's like why you are required to submit a starting 11 before a match. Yeah. In football. That is in football. That's like, that's the football that's equivalent it. of it. That's it. That is it. Okay. You have 23 players, but you're required to submit a starting 11. And we didn't do that. So you can have, yeah. So, and there's a, there's, you know, in football too, pre technical meeting, there's a time when you have to do everything. Yeah. So if you don't submit your starting 11 before the game, it's impossible for the game to go on. 
then you're not interested in playing the match. Yeah. That is basically the equivalent of that rule. <laughs> now, the reason being Sorry, simple. Something happened just probably. Yeah. Like, imagine that Qatar 2022 yeah. in our first match. It comes out that we've been disqualified from playing against... Because we didn't... Because, because we didn't somebody... Submit somebody, our, somebody. <laughs> forgot to submit and, our... and I don't know, Evans. <laughs> yeah, Evans. yeah, George. Evan, you know, and, and, and this is where I, we have to get sad about it. You know, we, we will want to take the apology and yes... I was going to, um, I was going to ask you happy. whether you accept the apology, George. Yeah, I, you see, I, it's difficult for me to accept the apology. Why? Because in 1996 Olympics in, in Atlanta... We had a mix up again because we were not able to fairly interpret the rules. And a great so this has happened before. Is, oh. Ah, in 1996. It, it's not exactly the situation, but it was close again because then we, were, we failed to interpret the rules. We we're not supposed to use an athlete because the rule then did not allow, you know, after the first round when you have used an athlete to use the athlete there. We went, we had qualified to the final. We lined up for the final. If you watch the 1996 video, they showed Ghana everything, but at the end of the race, there was no Ghana because. Ghana was disqualified again because we failed to interpret the rules there. They wanted Coaches, to beat. They wanted to beat the officials in 1996. Yes. The person that was in responsible for making sure That's that the right. rules were correctly interpreted went shopping. She went to buy. Yes. She went to buy watches because it was cheaper. I she went to, she went, yes, she Evans, went Evans, you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Evans. <laughs> Evans, wow. Evans. So you look at it, Evans. Look at it. Look at it. This is why I get sad. Look, look at it. This is why I get sad. So because that happened. You know that um, um, there was like a paradigm shift to say that, okay, let's get former former yeah. athletes to handle these um, athletes because they have been there before. They will understand the technicalities. So when you have former athletes handling these athletes and we still make this mistake, it's highly unpardonable. So, so who specifically was in charge of this submission? Name and shame. <laughs> no, but I, I, I had a name before I came on, but we haven't had a name. They, Whole Ghana Athletics Association taking the, the blame for this and apologizing. Do we know who? No, but they said the I, coaching I, I, no, crew. No, no, we, we know who was the coach. Okay. And his name is Leo Miles Mills. The great. But, that, but that's the great. That's the great. And that is the... That is the so old, that's the point George is making. making. That, that at first, you used to have um, square pegs in round holes, apparently. In quotes. In quotes. So you had people who had not done athletics before who were coaches. And we all said, look, I mean, you understand. The... You can't have ex football. It's just like the whole ex football yeah. thing. So now we say let's have ex athletes who are now administrators to be in charge. And, and may, so, so, so George, here we are. Um, I think we've lost George. But, but so, French, so we have a situation where they were third in the semi final. They okay, were well, made it to the final. Made it to the final. Yes, only to be told they couldn't run in the final because. And this must have been the last minute, right? Or, no, it I mean, was it, just moments after the race up, when it became apparent. And people always, you see, I've seen people ask a lot of questions about this and mm -hmm. say that the rule doesn't make sense. Because what, what difference would they have made if we use Kofi player or, A or player yeah, B? The rule is a rule. A rule is a rule, exactly. Yeah. But also you have to understand that production is important. All of these things, TV packaging is a crucial part yeah. Of everything. Absolutely. So you remember when the television uh, images brought up the names of Ghana's forerunners, it actually had Joe Paul Amos' name in there instead of the no, one that was actually running. No, no, no. That's because they didn't make the change. So what, what could have happened basically is that Joseph Paul Amos' father and mother could have been at home huh? watching the race. And wondered. And wondered, that What's is wrong? not my son. What's yeah. wrong with my son? Exactly. Or worse still, you could have a commentator. Remember, there are thousands of athletes that compete at these games. Yeah. You could have a commentator with the list, with Joseph Paul Amor's name. He doesn't know his face, but he's got the name Attribute that he's running, that, yeah. and he would find all of his records. And then Rashid would finish the race, and he's describing all the records of Joseph Paul Amor because it's his name that is there, but now, it's Rashid that actually, actually happened. You know what? Yes, and that is why... During the race, when, 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 when we ran the race... When Rashid took the thing, the yeah. commentator actually kept, if you watch the race again, yeah, 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 he yeah, kept yeah. calling him Joseph Paul Amor That's because that was exactly. what he had him. And you can't blame the commentator for that because Did they can't keep him? the faces of thousands of people. Exactly. So the, Unless you are using both of them. So, course. question. Has anybody been fired? No. No. Oh, yeah? Should no, somebody yeah. be fired? I think so. Um, I, I, I think what's happening, though, is that these, these coaches, they are not fully employed by the GAA. 
And so they are only taken to these competitions on part-time basis when competitions arrive. Okay. So the only punishment perhaps Leo could get is not be taken to another competition. Do we have, but then do we there have is somebody team? else who are officials who have oversight responsibility for these coaches. Well, fans, do we pay them? Vicarious liability. They also have to be able to take, you know, to sit back and say, we all yeah, failed the boys. Ask a question, do we pay them? Do we pay them? Or? Yeah, we do pay them. Pay DM. Yeah. No, I mean, probably. No, not a salary. It's not a salary job. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service. So you come and render the service, they pay you per diem. If you win something, they give you bonuses, you take away. That is always the arrangement. So at the moment, Leo Miles Mills, who is the coach of this team, down there after this competition, is basically done. Unless there's another competition where he goes. He took them to the World Championships in 2019 as well. I was there. And I'm a big fan of Leo because he's a former national record holder. But what happened is unpardonable. Think about Absolutely. this, Evans. These boys, Azamati didn't make the 100 meter final. Sean didn't even make the semi final. But these boys, this was their biggest hope of any medal yeah. at the biggest stage yeah. at any point in time. Yeah. The winning time that the United Kingdom posted yeah. in the relays was slower than the national record the Ghanaians run in Oregon just a few weeks ago and finished fifth. Okay. Do you get it? So that, that means they could have easily won. They could have had gold. That's why it's paying them. Yeah. I spoke to Azamati right after the race. He couldn't take it. Sean Shuffle just tweeted immediately, said, I can't believe this. Yeah. Everyone was gutted. Years and years of hard work down the drain because somebody forgot right. to do his job. So, so just to finish up, I, yeah. I talk about solutions. 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Let's, let's so do that. Nigeria got 35 medals. It's unprecedented for them in one game. You know That's what? That's why I said disqualified in powerlifting. One, yeah. they were guaranteed two gold medals. Yeah. yeah. So, so your, quickly, your solution is what? Nigeria in 2019, Nigeria's government arguably is, <laughs> you know, Nigeria's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So their sports minister said, look, I know that the government is not very great. So I'm going to start and adopt an athlete policy. Corporates, take one locally based athlete, sponsor them $10,000. Take a foreign based athlete, sponsor them $20,000. That's it. That's it. It was giving them 35 medals. It's as simple as that. I see. We could do the same. So, it's, it's it's that that simple. Simple. so they left it to the corporate world. Yeah, and to, to... And of course, and you know notice, it, it has been in areas of their strength. Yeah. Because you see, when Evans Mensa Company Limited is taking you, you can be damn sure that they, they are taking you because you are strong in that area. Yeah, of course. They will not just throw money at you it's because... So <laughs> in the powerlifting and all those things, all the corporates that took all these athletes, took them because they can show them a record of doing well. Of yeah. progress. Of progress. And so the government can take very little responsibility, but the companies are using it for their mileage. It's giving them 35 medals. So maybe, I know we always say corporate Ghana, but, but, yeah, it makes and, sense. and it's not very expensive. Because, because I, I, I wonder, I mean, for a corporate person, Azamati, for example, if he had paying $10,000 for and him. He's on your, and he's and now, your and now your product. It's now the face of your... Come on. Now, that's a big deal that's for big you. That's big that's, 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 that's can do it. Like that's, that's, that's big deal, yeah. I mean, that's a big deal now yeah. for you. I mean, so, so, that's, what, so, that's, on, so it, that's what Nigeria did. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's giving them 35 but, but do they have trucks? No, they are, Nigeria is as bad as we are in this Okay. So, so, which means that, yeah, so take them out, but you're sponsoring, you're paying yes. for them to get... Yeah. So that while they are in school, they use the school facilities. While they are out of school, then the corporates will get the bill of how much is your FA, how much do you okay. need to go, then we'll just pay for you. Okay. And then we take the credit. So you, you support that as, uh, as a I solution? agree. Because it's we not, need to sustain why should, why, why, this Why should a national buzz? athlete like Deborah use 24 hours to travel from the US to the United Kingdom? Because she kept... Because we got her a cheap ticket. Yeah. And the flights kept, kept getting... And there was an eight-hour transit in an airport for a national athlete. Wow. He, she arrived there five hours before her, her, her event. And wow. she qualified. You know what? Joy Sports, we are going to sponsor three athletes. Come on. Friends, right? <laughs> anyway, look, it's been a fascinating conversation. Um, Gary had just brought up the example of Nigeria. And I know this sports minister is a listening one. Um, Gary has said it already. He, he's, he's trying. And I know he believes in the ability of the corporate world to help. And the corporate world knows this is, this is great untapped potential there for just selling your product. I mean, just think about it. Um, Let's hope that um, after this, the Olympics next, right? 
Uh, what are the Most championships, championships next, next year? year. Okay. Budapest. Okay. August. Okay. If you're a corporate person, um, look, the Sports Minister takes this app, and I know you you love doing this. They will help. Tell them what is what is app. Azamati's name on uh, corporate gala loves that, and and sell Azamati it to them. Beans. Think about it. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening, people. <laughs>